we should ditch this stuff about a dispassionate search for truth. Um, we should have a passionate search for truth. No one ever does anything great or is able to hold in for the long term if they don't care. Um, you got to care. You got to have a passionate concern for the truth. Um, people throw the baby out with the bathwater. They throw the life out with the trash. Um, a problem is having an emotional commitment to some idea, not the truth. Um, or getting involved in all this social nonsense, not being committed to the truth, but being like committed to social, um, like positioning, stature, stuff like that. It's not emotion that's a problem. It's how you do it. It's what you're committed to. Does someone have a um, passionate concern for social stature? for being part of a group um, or for being committed to the truth. That's a very big distinction. Those things don't even belong in the same classification at all to say don't be dispassionate because of some people's social gaming and to include a passionate concern for the truth or to ignore that or deny it is ludicrous, irrational, illogical, denial of reality, denial of how things work. Um, do we have a dispassionate concern for nutrients or a dispassionate concern for good food? No. Um, does someone exercise hard and live well um, dispassionately? No. It's because one cares. Reason and caring about it. Reasoning is part of consciousness which is wrapped up in living a good life and emotion and values in the first place. It's about valuing. To be dispassionate is to not have a value. To value science and truth is to have an emotional response to it necessarily. That's what's going to happen in our consciousness. Um, so it's ridiculous. It's a matter of learning how to think logically and having a value for that. Learning that logic is the only thing we can do without being logical. We cannot be conceptually committed to the truth. Giving up on logic is giving up on the truth. Um, so we need to be passionate about what we do and convey that to students and be passionate about sticking to the truth. And if you're wrong, admit you're wrong. Um, otherwise it's a fail. Um, Mary Curie, Marie Curie, um, quote, I am among those who think that science has great beauty. A scientist in his laboratory is not only a technician. He is also a child placed before natural phenomena, which impress him like a fairy tale, unquote. Ha, that is not dispassionate. And you can't say she wasn't a great scientist. What, two great Nobel Prizes? You know, excuse me, show me the person who's done that. Not many. Um, I think they're both what? One in physics, one in chemistry, if I remember right. Um, and Richard Feynman, no, another Nobel Prize winner in physics. Um, here's an article, interesting. Um, quote, Richard Feynman, the man who only used his in intellect to enjoy life, unquote. 17 January 2021 by Ali, math teacher, content curator, soccer player, Maradona fan. Um, I'll put a link to this, medium.com, but nice article, got some good stuff, good job, Ali, um, and hope you enjoyed the World Cup, Ali, um, not that I expect him to watch, I'm just saying, just for the sake of saying it, um, now, he says, that's some experts, um, and I'll do quote when I'm quoting him and subquote when there's quotation marks he's using of um, around a term or if Feynman's, if he's quoting Feynman. So um, he's talking about reading some books on Feynman and stuff and looking into him. Quote, as I quickly skimmed over its pages, I happened to notice a particularly interesting sentence at the bottom of one page, which read, 
subquote, I have to understand the world, comma, you see, unquote, unsubquote, unquote. Um, and Sue, he picked a book in a library, looked over his pages. Um, and I guess he's, yeah, some, some book of Richard Feynman. Um, right. He had to understand the world. And um, notes, notes, notes. Move the browser a little bit. There they are. Move this. Move this back over with the article. Okay. Um, scroll down. Another quote. Okay. And he says, um, so Ali speaking, quote, even today, whenever my life's joy takes a slight dip, I turn back and take yet another look at Feynman's comments on life in order to regain my felicity. Yes, it's his ability to put the utmost passion, zeal, and excitement into mentioning even the simplest things in life which revive me, probably due to the fact that emotions are contagious, unquote true um quote Feynman had the rare and unique ability to take a very different look at seemingly even the most basic things unquote that's important that's what makes us curiosity independence independent thought is about thinking it on your own and not having stale words or thinking words or someone else's ideas makes your own thought Feynman knew what it was to think and he would go through the process that's what's going to make a scientist great that's what we should try to do in everything we do be unique be different because we're always we're always human we're automatically the same so we got to be unique in ourselves and make that connection to others accordingly have a unique contribution to the tribe don't be scared about being different we have to because we're all different we're like it or not just a matter of doing that and people having the sense to see that people are still the same when they're different. Don't hate the other as some do. Now that's a nasty part of hating the other is a nasty part of human history and of the way some humans are, but not all of them, of course. Some people are good. But and there are good things in human history. But that's a good sentence. Quote, Feynman had the rare and unique ability to take a very different look at seemingly even the most basic things. And then, um, that's, you know, something that you have to, to make a great discovery, do something new, discover something you're never going to discover something new if you don't take a different look at seemingly the most basic things. Um, everyone's looking at these little numbers and these little dots of light in the sky. It's the person who takes a different look that's going to see they go in elliptical orbits, not circular, and so on and so forth. Um, or, you know, because the others are bound by convention. Um, and again, this ties into some of the popper stuff I've been talking about. Um, you know, here you got a commitment to experience, not to what other people say. Um, it's a commitment to experience. That's what is going to make you creative. And that's where we need to immerse ourselves, not in make up a, making up a bunch of junk. But there's this excitement there, this joy, a joy in finding out what. I think that might have even been the name of one of Feynman's books, some of the anecdotes he wrote. Um, so there, um, this is cool. Quote, Richard Feynman was the type of person who would play the bongo or draw people that he saw on pieces of paper in his pocket to clear his mind after simplifying some of the most complicated topics in the world. Editors of abacus.com 
have compiled many of his drawings here. I highly suggest you check them out. Unquote. And yeah, they're pretty good. I'm surprised. Um, you know, they're not like, um, Michelangelo quality or Vermeer um, or Rembrandt, but good drawings. Um, show some character and stuff. Like this one here of like a kid reaching through a fence or something. Um, so yeah, I'll put a link to some of that too. Um, he could do different things. Find one is interesting, had a lot of talents. So, um, and he could play the bongo drums, draw, continuing, quote, this can be solely attributed to the sense of humor he possessed as well as his eccentric nature. It wasn't difficult to notice that he used his experience, his expansive intelligence to simply have fun. Yes, Feynman dabbled in physics purely for the sake of entertainment. Unquote. So again, quote, it wasn't difficult to notice that he used his expansive intelligence to simply have fun. Yes, Feynman dabbled in physics purely for the sake of entertainment. Unquote. Amen. Quote, he had decided to go down this route in a bid to come out of the state of depression he had fallen into following the passing of his wife, Arlene Greenbaum where he found himself no longer able to enjoy life. He describes how he came to this decision on page 157 of his book titled, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman. And you can read that in this article, which I'll put a link to. Um, and this part of his life is in the movie Infinity. I'll put a link to that if I remember. If I remember Infinity, I write that in good movie. I like it, Infinity. Okay. Um, so, scrolling down. But he says, is that part of it that I have linked to? Um, yeah, okay. So this part is fine. So to continue, I thought I was going to talk about his wife, but it says, quote, he describes how he came to this decision on page 157 of his book titled, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman. Subquote. So I got this new attitude. Now that I am burned out and I'll never, and I'll never accomplish anything. I've got this nice position at the university teaching classes, which I rather enjoy. And and just like I read the Arabian Nights for pleasure, I'm going to play with physics whenever I want to without worrying about any importance whatsoever, unquote. Um, this decision was a turning point for him as he became a man who was able to use physics to understand the world and put what he understood into terms that enabled those around him to understand it as well. That is why when he discovered this ability, he spectacularly expressed it by saying, subquote, if we have understood the essence of something, we can explain it on all levels, end subquote, end quote. Um, amen. There's logic and understanding and joy. We need to know how to understand, how to explain on different levels. Different levels means different levels of abstraction. Very abstract complicated physics all the equations or something simple um when you catch it catch it quietly easy most anybody can understand that or one could talk about the work done in catching it and go into physics and talk about it in terms of force distance time impulse stuff like that um, or get into the motion of muscle, deformation of skin and muscle, 
ligament, tendon, blood vessel, brain, neurology, chemistry, electri electrical forces in the nerves and all that, calcium channels. Um, but, you know, catch quietly. Simple. Um, but we need to know logic, thinking skills, epistemology, and have a curiosity. We learn those things about thinking so we can engage our curiosity and not be stopped every time. We've got to be able to build and think and use concepts, our tools of conceptual thought, and know how to put them together and make new ones. Um, and then down here, um, so scrolling down furthermore i'm not sure where this i'll like pick up on this okay later so that would be so um yeah so quote furthermore he would later receive a nobel prize for his work in quantum mechanics in one of his interviews Feynman recalls that day as follows subquote when i was eating lunch some kids threw blue, blue medallion on the plate the Cornell sign in the cafeteria. Um, unquote, wait, what? That is weird. Um, I'll scroll up. I think it's up here. Maybe further. Um, when I was leading, eating lunch, some kids threw blue medallion on the plate. The Cornell sign in the cafeteria? It didn't make no sense. I'll have to see what the correct thing is. I guess the guy just forgot some words or the copying didn't come right. Okay, so, quote, when the plate came down, it wobbled, and the blue thing went around like this. And I wondered what the relation was between the, the tubes. I was just playing. So I played around with the equations of motion of the rotating these and I kept continuing playing with it. This rotation led me to a similar problem of the rotation of the spin of an electron according to Dirac's equation. And that just led me back into quantum electrodynamics. Everything just poured out, unquote. But you get the idea, even though that is like poor grammar and something's going on and that's just not right. I'll have to see, try to find the video or something, get a better transcript. But yeah, so things are interrelated. You got to look at one thing that's seemingly unrelated and connect it to other because everything is interrelated. Just like a lot of people, even though after Newton, a lot of people don't think the moon and a baseball can be classified as the same kind of thing, but they can because they're both being pulled towards the earth. You throw the ball and it's moving and falling, it's falling towards the earth, and the moon is also, but it's falling at a rate equal to the earth's curvature, so it never comes down, basically speaking. Um, so he's starting out looking at the world and having joy and playing with it and being curious, and then because of what he knows, only with the background knowledge, he's able to do this. It's not just, oh, you play and then you find out. You got to have the knowledge, just as um, Sherlock Holmes did. Some people think they can just go like try to analyze things. Oh, and I'm like Sherlock. No, you got to the background knowledge. One thing not made enough of, by you know about Sherlock is that he did research on things before a case ever started. He knew about mud in different places of london mud and dirt and clay and about um people and professions and all these interactions before he ever came to a case lots and lots of observation and induction one should immerse oneself in the world and in one's field in the world in general and here Feynman's given some he went to teach in brazil and found out that there's a lot too much memorization in portuguese Portugal. 
Brazil. Yeah, but they're two, he's talking about Portuguese in Brazil. But um, he, this is good. He um, made some recommendations. Um, could there be too much, as I say, memorization in the book? You notice that students would start studying physics earlier and maybe studying it longer, study it longer than in the U.S., but there weren't as many, like, great scientists. He's like, why? What's the cause? Let's be scientific about this. He says, quote, or not he, but, um, okay, so quote, so quote again here, I'll say, so quote, for other educators to also be able to implement these observations, he summarized his experiences into seven items. Sub quote, don't just teach your students to read. Teach them to question what, what they need, what they read, what they study. Teach them to doubt. Unquote. I'd really say be, make them be curious. Um, doubt is like saying no. Curiosity drives you to know for sure. It's like more like independent thinking. Teach them to think independently. That's more the fundamental. Doubt is like saying no. I'm not sure. Doesn't lead you anywhere. Curiosity drives you somewhere. Doubt doesn't. Four. So go teach them to think. Uncle, amen. Just as the people at Johns Hopkins have said, as I talked about in other places, other videos and stuff, people need to know more about logic and epistemology. People in general, and especially so called scientists. A lot of them don't know enough about that. Um, Subquote five Teach them to make mistakes and learn from them. Six, teach them to understand something. Seven, teach them how to teach others, Un subquote, unquote, yes. In teaching how to teach others, you got to know something better yourself and be able to put it into words and explain it in different ways. you got to have the connections made in your mind to present it right, if you're going to do it well and not just pretend you're teaching or talk. Someone, I'm not against lecture. Someone can give a very good lecture and be dynamic. Some people are horrible at lecturing. It's a matter of knowing to do things so well, you can give a lecture and people are interested and you know how to connect with them and bring in the audience and go from their point of view. That's what real lecturing is. Um, and how to really understand something instead of just memorize or know. Amen. Understanding is deeper. To understand, as I've learned in philosophy, a good thing is not just, oh, did I do good on the test? Or you think you understand? Understanding and Feynman wouldn't think this. I don't know what he would say about understanding, but what understanding is, having studied logic, it's knowing the essence of something, relating it to other causally relevant things that you know as much as possible. You know, we're limited and finite, so we can only do so much, but there has to be some connection to other things. Um, three, you got to Trace that ba idea back to the evidence of the census and you, you know where you got it and it's connected to reality and it's true. Experience perception is the given the standard that um, we can't argue about. Um, that's necessity there. That's the given, the unchosen, the hard and fast. Um, so again, he's showing he's not just lost in his science and like unknown other places. He knows about how to teach, how to improve things. He's asking why. He's being scientific about these things. Um, and he's showing he can think and process well. And that's one thing one needs to do to be really good at science and not just fake it. Um, here, another part of the article, quote, in 1978, when the surrounding area of his forest, yeah, unquote, wait, so this shows how, again, how he was good at other things, and how he'd actually take things seriously, it wasn't lost in words, lost in math, science is about knowing the world and being good at it, and living a better life, so, quote, in 1978, when the surrounding area of his forest in Altadena, experienced a fire, 
he insured his home for flood protection. This action of his puzzled others is there was no river near his house. However, in 1979, the area experienced heavy rains and many houses experienced flood damage resulting from landslides. His incredible physics knowledge and observation skills, observational skills helped him take necessary precautions, unquote. Sweet, so cool. Reminds me of the story of Thales, ancient Greek philosopher who is rumored to have, you know, I don't know if it's true, but he's rumored to have bought up the olive presses because he knew that some event was coming um, and then he made a fortune. I don't know if that's actually true. That could have just been some so-called apocryphal story. Um, people could have just said that's something he could have done. He was so smart, but I don't know. You know, so one of the wise people of ancient Greece. Um, so, and then ending quote in summary, Richard Feynman was a great man. However, the reason why he is so vital, in my opinion has nothing to do with his Nobel Prize or him having lectured in the largest of universities. Feynman's view on the world, his endless curiosity, him understanding himself and living his life accordingly, him brainstorming to understand things and spreading that to others around him, his wife, and especially his disregard for ideas that many people would die on a hill for, make him such a great scientist, unquote. Amen. What matters is the truth, not some idea. That's exactly it. That's how we should be. It's not dispassionate science, nonsense to hell with that. Do I have a dispassion for the truth? Like what the hell? That's kind of, that's insane. You know, for those who want to live, we should have a passionate regard for what's true. If we care about our friends and family and who they are and protecting them and helping them, we should have a passionate regard and commitment to the truth. Amen. Um, and then here we go, quote and subquote again. Quote, I want to end this piece with this piece of advice he gave to all of humankind. Subquote, fall in love with some activity and do it. Nobody ever figures out what life is all about, and it doesn't matter. Explore the world. Nearly everything is really interesting if you go into it deeply enough. Work as hard and as much as you want to on the things you like to do the best. Don't think about what you want to be, but what you want to do. Keep up some kind of a minimum with other things so that society doesn't stop you from doing anything at all. Unsub quote, unquote, amen. Dig into things, dig deeply enough. Know how this thing up here works. Your mind, your reason, your logic, your concepts, your induction, your generalization, your classification, your definitions. Um, and explore, be curious, have a passionate commitment to the truth. And to do that, we need to have a passionate commitment to reason and logic. Um, as Mary Curie said, Quote, I am among those who think that science has great beauty. A scientist in his laboratory is not only a technician. He is also a child placed before natural phenomena which impress him like a fairy tale. Unquote. Amen. Food for thought. Enjoy.